Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my Code to Care series. Uh, as you may know, I like to alternate between topics around just raw education, use cases, and kind of safety, ethics, bias, those sorts of topics. But there's more to AI than just those three things. There's hot topics, there's current news, there's more detail in the technology underneath the scenes. So I'm, I've invited a few special guests to join me in this Code to Care series. So uh, in a prior video, you saw Nikolai uh, Mitchko talk about um, uh, model distillation and how to create smaller uh, models. And in this video, Jess Jowdy is going to talk about the power behind uh, AI. Both Nikolai and Jess are uh, great colleagues here. They know a ton about uh, AI and will help me out with some of these uh, some of these more expansive AI topics. So take it away, Jess. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica Jowdy, and today I'll be talking to you about the power of AI. Scratch that. I will be talking to you about the power that powers AI and energy usage in AI technologies. So if you've been looking in the news lately, you may have seen that large tech companies have started investing in nuclear technologies to support their AI initiatives. And you might be asking yourself, is this really necessary? Do AI uh, innovations really require that much energy? And the answer for that, right, at least as of now, is is yes. Um, you know, Meta just announced this new uh, model that they'll be rolling out that's going to be trained on some of the largest computational clusters that the world has ever seen. What that means is that those computational clusters are going to be using, they're anticipating the five times more energy than the largest supercomputer in the United States. So that's a lot of energy. And at least up until 2020, so uh, from, we'll say, 2016 to about 2020, uh, data center energy usage was relatively stagnant. Even though more and more were asked of those data centers, uh, they were able to leverage efficiencies to maintain the same energy usage across those years. Around 2020, though, we started to see that those efficiencies um, were actually being outweighed by more and more demand for computational power, um, a lot of that being driven from AI use cases. So these tech organizations started looking around and were trying to figure out okay, where's the best play or what are some energy options I can use uh, to power my AI initiatives? So they looked at geothermal power, uh, solar and wind power. And as I mentioned earlier, Microsoft just recently announced their, um, their purchase of the Three Mile Island uh, in Pennsylvania, which is a, a nuclear power plant that's scheduled to be operational again in 2028. Um, and this uh, source would provide a huge non-carbon energy uh, option for Microsoft to power their AI initiatives. And we're seeing a lot of these tech giants kind of following suit uh, with investments in nuclear technology in the coming decade. Hey there, I'm just popping in to say that I'd love to hear your comments and feedback on this video. I read all the comments, so let me know what you think. Let me know what suggestions you have for my next video by uh, putting in some comments uh, below the line here. Thanks. So is this all inevitable? Are we just going to continue to just consume and consume energy as we go? I'd say yes and no. Um, like I said, as as AI and innovation continues, we do expect more and more energy to be demanded. But as consumers of that technology and as developers, we can be mindful of our energy usage and ways and we can start to have calls to action for ways that we can limit uh, that energy usage. So that's what we're going to walk through now. I have three for you. My first is going to be use what you need. No more, no less. So what do I mean by that? Uh, do I need everything, everywhere, all at once, all the time? Maybe not. Uh, actually, there was a study run by MIT and Northeastern together where they were training a, a model and they decided to limit the amount of energy that was provided to each of the GPUs um, that were a part of that training. And what they found was even though it took about three hours longer for that training to complete, they were able to save the equivalent amount of energy that a U.S. household uh, uses within a week. Uh, so that was a huge energy savings, which brings us back to if you don't need it, don't use it. Simple as that. Second call to action is to use the right tool for the right job. I think there has been a trend where um, generative AI especially is being used to satisfy 
a number of different problems, really a variety of different problems that we're encountering. Um, but it's not necessarily always the most efficient tool. So take, for instance, the difference in energy usage between a chat GPT query and a single, a simple Google search. Uh, so a chat GPT query will take 10 times more energy than a simple Google search. Generating an image leveraging uh, AI will take the same amount of energy as it takes to fully charge a smartphone. So, you know, when you're evaluating the tool for a particular purpose, consider whether or not that tool is, is really de designed for that particular purpose. Um, you know, don't overcomplicate things. Use the right tool for the right job. Number three, think about scale. When we design technologies, it's important for us to think like we are designing technology for the masses. Uh, we have seen technology explode uh, across the world and get um, really uh, adopted in industries and in places that, I, that weren't expected. So when we're designing new models, new technologies, assume that you're catering to the masses and build the technology like so. So those are my three calls to action. Use what you need, no more, no less. Use the right tools for the right job and think about scale. And that'll help us all be more energy efficient as we continue to use AI. Thank you so much for your time. Hey there, I hope you liked this video. Um, I've added a next video at the end of this. So um, so take a look at that if you, uh, if you enjoyed this. And if something resonated with you, please drop uh, a comment um, at, um, uh, down below here. I read every comment, uh, myself and I really appreciate hearing from you. Thanks.